Ivana says, who is your ideal female in business world? Um, well, the first one that comes to my mind, and I don't really know that many of them, but the first one that just popped into my mind was uh, Jessica Alba, because like, I'm pretty sure she's, her company's more than a billion dollars now, and um, you know, she seems to have done things quite well. But I honestly don't know that many uh, female entrepreneurs. You'll, it's, it's funny because most, you know, most female entrepreneurs, they follow female entrepreneurs, and most male entrepreneurs follow like male entrepreneurs. And that's not, that doesn't mean that that's what you should do, but it's just kind of, it's just kind of how things end up happening. Because people like to learn from people who, are, who they think are like them even if they're not consciously making that decision, subconsciously that's going on. And if you want to see it, in effect, if you want to see it happen, um, just go to any event and you'll notice that the people in the audience look like the person who's speaking quite a lot of the time. If the, if the guy who's presenting is, uh, he's got like a really big beard, you'll notice most of the, it'll be mostly dudes and they'll all have beards. And if the guy who's presenting has a bald head, there'll be a, a dispor disproportionate amount of men with bald heads in there. And so it's not just about the male-female thing. Uh, it's also just people who look like them, people who are similar ages to them and, and all of that. But I honestly think it's best when you, when you learn from people who aren't like you because you get fresh perspectives. So I think it would probably be a good idea for me to read some female entrepreneurs' books. And it's definitely a good idea for female entrepreneurs to learn from some male entrepreneurs. And that's why, um, you know, the, in our, in our uh, community, one thing I've found, if you ever start a Facebook community or anything like that, the best ingredient that you can possibly have in there to make it awesome is, um, is diversity. So different ages, different niches, different uh, sexes, different races, different countries, different time zones. The more of a mix that you can have in there, the healthier the community will be. And that's because people get fresh perspectives. They learn from other people, um, and it, it really helps a lot. And to give you an example of how I learned what not to do there, uh, my first the first, when I started my digital marketing agency and I hired, uh, and I hired people, I hired all dudes who were the same age as me and just like me. So I had like an office of like 10 dudes who were all like 25 years old and it was the most unproductive office you've ever seen. Dudes would come in drunk, there would always be dudes drinking beers, they would always be, it would be like a locker room conversation and you know, I learned that, I was like, wow, you, you just can't put everyone who's the same together because it gets, it gets extreme. And if you have, you'll notice this too about uh, all, if you have same sex schools and then schools that have two sexes, uh, those people in the same sex schools, like they, they're not as good at talking to females and women and all of that stuff. And it's because you know, it's, it's actually best to have the diversity there. It helps a lot with people learning and evolution and things like that. And it all, it all can really be traced back to uh, evolution, really. You know, if you've got, if you've got a, a species of animal in nature and they just start inbreeding, then the, uh, you know, they'll get sick and they'll eventually die and cease to exist. But if you've got species that crossbreed, that makes actually the best, uh, you know, that makes stronger animals. And that's why if you've got a purebred dog or a purebred cat or something, they've actually got way more chance of dying and getting sick and all of that compared to a crossbreed. The crossbreeds are tough. And that, the same thing goes on in a community or in a Facebook group. You'll notice that the best cities and the best uh, countries, they've all got like diversity in them, like different uh, nationalities, different languages, all of that stuff. And that's really what makes a good community. So when you're growing your, if, you're, if you start a program and you've got a group like Consulting Accelerator does, 
then I recommend making sure that it doesn't evolve to get too extreme. Like um, another good example is, you know, the female entrepreneurs who have Facebook groups which only have females in them. I get uh, my wife, Ashley, to, to join those and gather intel for me to see what's going on in there because like they don't even allow men in these things, which is, which is pretty funny. But it gets, it gets weird in there because they just start talking about, like you'll notice, you can go and look at any of these right now. The number one question that people are asking is what do you think of my headshot, my photo? Or what do you think of this design? Or what do you think of this font? Or what do you think of this? And they're talking about the wrong thing. But, you know, that's because it's evolved that way and no one else, like a male hasn't come in and, and added more of his, like, rational, like, uh, thinking. And so, you know, the, the two work best. Like, if you just had an all, an all men group or just had an all women group, it's way better to have a mix. You'll find that you have way better results. Same with niches. You know, the more people we come, who, have, who come into this program, and the more different niches they pick, the better niches people start picking. It just starts breeding like that. 